I'd carry it around like this and put everything in my pockets. Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today I'm bringing you a non-Hermes lover's first impressions of an Hermes Birkin. So many of you have been keen to hear what I've got to say now that I own one of these bags. One of these bags that I thought I would never own for many, many reasons. One, because of how most of us have to get them. Two, because of the ridiculous prices. Three, because of the actual design of the bag. Four, because of the just crazy amount of stuff you've got to buy to be able to get one. And five, because, I don't know, I just needed to say five things. <laughs> Today I'm bringing you my first impressions. I have carried the bag um, one, two, three times, I think, um, for a couple of hours for the last, for the first couple of times, and then I took it to work last week. Oh my God, I took luxury to work. Um, I took it to work last week and had it for the day. And you know what? Every time I've carried this bag, it's rained or threatened rain except for the time I carried it in Paris, so that's a fourth time. But yeah, it's like a bad omen. Every time this bag comes out, the skies start to cry. Isn't that crazy? So I'm gonna just cover off what it's been like for me to carry it when I choose to wear it, how I'm styling it. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, maybe consider doing it because I put an outfit of the day up there most days, whether it's a work day, whether it's a casual day, an event, so you get a bit of a gist of how I kind of rotate the bags in my collection through my looks and how I style them up. So let's just go over the specs of this bag first. This is a Birkin 30. It is in Togo leather, which I'll bring up to the front here so you can see the grain and palladium hardware. Um, if there was going to be a Birkin for me, this would be it. I don't know how the client advisor figured that out, but she did. The colour the hardware, the textured leather, um, all tick, tick, tick for me in terms of the things that I love in my rather abstract bag collection. Um, so uh, it has feet on the bottom, it has four feet, um, and being a 30, it means that the handles are big enough to carry top handle or on the crook of your arm like this. Um, people ask, is it heavy? Yeah. I think it's pretty heavy for a bag that is pretty much just made of leather. So um, it is probably comparable to my new Wicker Capucine from Louis Vuitton in terms of heaviness. Um, it's got a couple of things in it, but it doesn't have much in it. Um, so yeah, I would say it's a heavy bag, which is probably why it's ideal for like a hand carry um, bag. This bag also comes with like this little lock and a, a key clochette i've been told it's you know out of fashion to put that on there by my good friend jean so i've taken it off <laughs> people have asked if i want twillies for this bag um i say no every time i've purchased twillies for a bag the bag wasn't quite right for me and i felt like i needed to add a bit of my own personality through a twilly a bando a rappy a mitza whatever you want to call it from whatever house i don't think this bag in these colors needs anything then people say what about the handles well as far as i'm aware i can get them sparred so if the handles get to a point where they're all hideous and dirty and rotten i'll get them repaired by hermes so from that perspective no i will not be decorating the bag with twilly in terms of rodeos and all the little dangly charms look I, uh, I, I like weird, quirky things. I do not get the Rodeos. I don't get them, especially the ones with multiple colors on them. They always seem to be bought down by some kind of ugly color. I've seen some in the Mauve Sylvester, which I think would be a nice contrast for this. But then like the little saddle is brown and it's just gross. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of Rodeos. I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan of these either. So I will never say never, but yeah, not found like a charm thing that I would look twice at, at, at this point in time. Okay. The bag itself. Um, it's a tote. It's just a tote. Um, in my opinion, 
I did take it out for an evening event um, and that was the local um, luxury precinct had a soiree on. It was a invite only shopping night and you can see that I double bagged it here in the mod shot. Um, and yeah, that was quite fun. Um, I couldn't decide which bag to take because Fendi invited us, but um, my Fendi SA also wanted to see my Birkin, so I thought, well, I'll just take both. And I ended up slipping my baguette inside later on, and it rained that night. But I did enjoy styling it that way. I have used it for lunch, just with shorts and a shirt, the first time I took it out here in Brisbane. I'll pop that mod shot over here. Again, it was easy. I carried it to lunch. It sat on the stool beside me. I carried it home, no big deal. Didn't really get a sense of what it was like and hardly had anything in it. I carried it to work last week. Here's the mod shot of that. And I filled it up with a book, so a, a, a novel size book, my remarkable notepad. And then I also have some things still in here. I have my Louis Vuitton mini pochette with some things in it. I have my... Jimmy Choo lanyard holder that I purchased from work and no I didn't do an unboxing here but it's a little bit extra. I've got a pair of sunglasses in a sunglasses pouch and I've got a little bit of plastic from the Allen's lollies that I bought for the team to munch on on Fridays. Yeah, it carried everything I needed. I could carry it top handle. I could carry it on the crook of my arm. I won't lie, it was annoying because it was threatening rain. So I had to get an umbrella and hold the umbrella over my arm just in case the rain came because apparently these don't cope so well in the rain. And Hermes have gone all stingy and they don't offer raincoats anymore with their bags, which, come on guys, like seriously, just throw a raincoat in for goodness sakes. So that was that's a little bit of my first gripe, I suppose, is the fact that certainly for me, every time I've gone to wear this bag, it rains. So that's a problem. Um, then the next problem that I have is that trying to carry a handheld or crook of the um, bag in the rain where it's not like crossbody and close to you is tricky and there's no raincoat. So that, that is annoying. Certainly... Perhaps I hold this bag to a high standard because I really disliked the concept of it so much that I expect it to work wonders and be a magical unicorn when the rest of my bags are no more practical, no more easy to use and hardly carry as much. So, you know, I need to disclose the fact that I I do have that, um, that challenge with the bag. Look, it doesn't have a lot of organisation, but none of my kind of tote bags do, so I have fallen for it and I have ordered a 7RP organizer for this and you will die when you find out how much it costs. Honestly, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So in terms of styling this bag, look, it's a cinch for me because of this color. This color works in my wardrobe. It sits with nearly everything that I have, um, which was another reason why it was an easy call for me to make if I was going to be trying a Birkin. The color of this Birkin makes it absolutely easy to say yes if there was you know a question about would it be right for my wardrobe because it works with every single thing that I have in my wardrobe. I'll do a little sweep through so that you can see how it fits and pop it in here as a cutaway. It is um yeah it's it's crazy how well this fits with my color palette um so that is also a plus. I did say that um, in my story time and in my unboxing that I do not like how these are presented when they're offered um, and when I see a lot of people unbox them and they don't remove the felt. Oh, that, it just really irks me. I think it's hideous. So I'm going to put in a picture here, um, awesome video, I can't remember what I have, of when I first saw the bag in the room at Hermes. And it was really hard for me to kind of see it for what it was, all done up with that felt stuff on it. I know why it's there. I, I'm not that stupid, but it's not nice. It doesn't do anything for the bag. It's hideous. And then you are trying to make a decision on something that you know costs a lot of money and it's not presented in the best light so i think there's something that could be done there whether or not it changed the color of that felt to like a white or something but it's it's not pleasant at all the other thing that i'm not a fan of with this bag and I, when i took it to work um, a few of my colleagues were looking at it because everyone you know was keen to see it is how annoying it is to do up and my um my friend said to me oh show me what you mean 
And so I'm doing this and she's like, okay, okay. And um, this is probably like making some of you cringe, but you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and I'm doing this and she goes, oh, okay. So what are those things sticking out for? I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting there. Um, and I said, oh, it's not, it's not finished yet. It's not finished yet. No, we've done that. And then we have to put this over here. And then we have to put this one over here. And she goes, oh, cool. And I said, no, no, it's not done yet. And then we have to put it over there. And then we have to put it over there. And she goes, oh, that's cool. And I'm like, it's not done yet. And then I twist it. And then, and then I go as far as to get the clochette and the lock and I pull the key out and I undo the little lock and I take the lock off and I put the lock through and I close the lock and I say, now it's done. <laughs> now it's done. And she's like, oh my God, just let me get my card, right? And you imagine reversing that whole process, like it's absurd. I mean, I've never seen anybody kind of position it with the um, with the lock on it. Like, I've never seen it done up like that. That kind of looks cute with the lock. But the rest of it, not a fan of. Do not, I hate this shape. Do not like that shape. Really prefer it to be open. I don't know what it is about that shape. I just do not like it. But um, I quite like it, you know, with the lock on. But you would just not be bothered opening it. I'd carry it around like this and put everything in my pockets. That's how determined I would be not to open and close this bag. Not to mention the probably vicarious damage that you would do by constantly moving things around all of those metal kind of hardware pieces. I, I assume over time that would cause considerable wear on the components of the bag. So I guess, um, is it worth the price? Look, the way that I bought it, yeah, I'll say yeah, it is, um, because I think that's a subjective um, question. I'm not answering that based on materials or <laughs> craftsmanship or anything. I just say, yeah, I think it's reasonable the way I bought it, which was in Paris, being offered one with no purchase history and being able to get my VAT refunded. Do I think it's worth the price if you've got to spend one or two times the amount of this bag to be able to qualify to be offered one that maybe you will like? No. No, 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 no. I still don't think the game is okay. I still don't think how Meredith was, um, I won't say treated. She was treated well. Um, it was more the, the expectation, I suppose, um, of, you know, shopping all of the categories before you even got to the thing that you were there to go for, which I think was pretty clear. I just think all of that, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I don't think it's okay. Um, but I understand that that's a part of it and that's part of what drives people and part of why people love the brand and love the item. I feel like I did a Stephen Bradbury on this and um, this is an Australian saying but for those of you who don't remember Stephen Bradbury was a, a speed skater and he got into the finals based off his hard work and training so he did the work, I did no work except going to Paris with Meredith and being at her VIP appointment with her and due to a large crash just before the finish line he skated through and won and it's kind of gone down in our you know cultural history as one of the great moments where sometimes things happen and you can just slide through for the easy win and certainly I feel like that's what my Hermes journey was a very short and probably quite painful one particularly for people who are still on the journey and waiting for their dream bag I can honestly say to you that this bag, as much as I'm enjoying using it, it has not sparked anything in me that would make me want to go and do the journey and get another one. If I happen to be in Paris and I happen to get a lottery appointment or I happened, you know, to um, be accompanying a friend on an appointment, sure I'd go along, but I would have no expectation. I really, yeah, it's it just surprised me. And because I was in the situation where I had the opportunity to be offered, to purchase and to play with it, I'm happy to say that I'm really enjoying it for now. But I obviously reserve the right to get that return on my investment, which is looking very healthy at the moment. And if you don't believe me, all you need to do is Google Birkin 30 Vert Comics, spelt like comics, 
um, palladium hardware and look at the prices on the resale market it's extraordinary <laughs> and it was a lay down misere when I saw that information come through so that's where I'm sitting with it at the moment as my relationship evolves I will keep you updated if there's a question that I didn't answer that you are keen to know um, pop it in the comments section down below let me know what your thoughts are and um, how you're sitting with the fact that I now own a Birkin that I said I never would. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays and sometimes some extras. I'd love to see you back here. Until then, ciao.